Are you looking for quality, handcrafted, one-of-a-kind, unique items? Look no farther than Off The Square Artisans. We have over 40 artists ranging from woodworking to blacksmithing, photography, rug weaving, handmade soaps, and everything in between. looking for home decor or a gift for that hard to shop for friend or family member, come on in to Off the Square Artisans located at 205 East High Street, one block east off the south side of the Rockville Square. Wednesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays, 1 to 5 p.m. call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum of the board for the Park County Health Department. Um, first on the agenda is the review and approval of our meeting minutes. This was from July 27th. This was to specifically discuss our proposed plan and our budget for the governor's um, health fund, which is now called Health First Indiana. So the acronym for that is HFI. That's how it's being um, labeled by the state. Um, and so those minutes reflect the, the rich conversation and all of the input that the board provided into our plan around chronic disease management, trauma, injury, education, and prevention, as well as those vaccinations and our mobile integrated health. So Mary Jo, just to recap a little bit, we uh, put together a proposed budget um, for consideration by the council because as part of this funding you have to create a, a non-reverting fund mm -hmm. and uh, so it's kind of like a chicken and an egg scenario we've got to get this appropriated and we have to have the opt-in and so it was kind of a sequential um, piece and so we're focusing on partnership with the ambulance service since they had just great um, show up for us for vaccines uh, during the pandemic and the staff and the resources with the skill sets and our plan is is to have a mobile integrated health strategy where we go out in partnership with our volunteer agencies and the small towns and do glucose cholesterols chronic disease management surveillance um, offer health uh, screens um, to these individuals that may not have primary care access and then also focus on trauma, education, injury, and prevention based on our health priorities that we discussed back in the May meeting. Um, and so that budget was set um, for the amount and we could not go over because there was the 60, 40% mm -hmm. split around the core services. And so we were able to balance that math out and we were able to, based on the feedback of the board, um, enhance the advertisement and publication line, add some additional um, life jackets for the water safety and drowning prevention, uh, along with those infant flotations and that. And we also um, took out the needle clippers and we added car seats. Um, so we had identified that there had been um, some accidents within the community with with the Amish population and that when, when traveling with their drivers there was shareable car seats and so how could we help improve trauma um, and injury prevention so I believe all of those reflections were captured in the, the budget um, that is in your packet um, and that is the budget um, that I have now shared with the council that will be ready for our August 17th meeting for appropriation approval um, and all of the board members, if you would like to come to that, it is open to the public. It will be at the Annex building this year. Um, and our time for um, proposal and adoption would be at 8.30, August 17th at the Annex building. So you all are welcome to come and be part of the discussion. In tandem with our um, with our budget for this particular governor appropriated dollars we will also have our regular budget mm -hmm. um, that we had put forth in June for consideration and so there has been and we got the advertisement into the paper so that we had that front loaded so that we could get that out within you know the public notice period so if we 
we had it there as we went through these steps, right? So um, we were able to move um, the uh, health, uh, the environmental health specialist and our food inspectors um, monies over to this fund, which carried that all over there, which freed up more money over in our regular fund. Um, and so I think that we're gonna do very well and I've been in constant contact with our um, county executives to make sure that that successfully carries. So um, that's where I have an update so far on our budget and our proposal. Now, after the August 17th meeting um, where we get that approval, um, you might have seen that I had requested to be on the commissioner's agenda for the Monday following so that we could get the official opt-in. Um, some of you may have read in the paper that the commissioners opted in um, without the plan or without information at their Monday meeting. And so I did reach out to Jim Neese about that. And so this resolution is being drafted by the um, commissioners. However, um, for any of you interested in going, that date was in the email for the um, commissioners meeting. It's the Monday following appropriations to then deliver the budget, the proposal, and our strategic plan for that to the commissioners because what happened on Monday was an opt-in for something that they just thought, well, we were gonna get the money and then see what the health department could do with it, it was basically what Jim's perception was. <laughs> and, you know, we have to, you know, and I think that they were doing due diligence just to say, hey, we don't wanna miss this opportunity, you know, however, our budget just need be submitted on September 1st by September 1st into the red cap system. So that's kind of the synopsis. Um, and just wanted to make sure that everybody was caught up on that level of communication around our strategy and the sequence of our plan. So I think it caught some of our elected officials off guard <laughs> when it was in the paper um, about the opt-in, but you know, we're a big team. It takes a village to solve these issues and Everybody's just doing their best job to make sure that we don't miss out for our Park County citizens to deliver um, some awesome services that we have proposed. So, so that is that. So can I get a motion for um, the approval of the minutes from our um, July 27th meeting? Yeah, I'll make that motion. No, second. Okay, thank you both. Any opposed? And I think I covered item three too. We have a pretty extensive agenda tonight. Um, we'll try to get through it as quickly as possible. Um, if we don't get to some of the agenda items, we'll just table those until our next meeting because a lot of our work has been focused around this health uh, fund. Um, Julie, um, from the last meeting, as part of the EMS services work um, that's going to help us stand up the mobile integrated health plan for the county, um, we asked her at the last meeting to stand up a subcommittee to help us develop a work plan. Um, and as we um, navigate through this in the 2024 year, there's a lot of components that have to be done around all core services. So not just the ones that we're specifically funding through the grant, but every single one of them that was listed on that 6040 form that um, I shared with you at the last meeting. And then together, um, we have to form what's called KPIs or key process indicators to go back and make sure that we have targets, that we have goals around everything from cessation to trauma injury prevention. And so it really helps us with our county level stewardship of these funds coming in in year one. Um, and so, with that being said, um, I have been in contact with our regional um, liaison um, for this funding grant, Michael Sutton, and he has been a wealth of information. So I've really been glad to be part of his um, communication and that support. Here's an agenda doc. And um, I would like to request um, on behalf of the board to be appointed the administrator so that I can get access to all of the key documents, all of the key materials for us to get those KPIs or those key process indicators in 
into the piece, but please know that that working group with the subcommittee is going to help inform that. It's not going to be the board. We're going to provide feedback into the plan because we need really the people who's going to be doing the, the, the projects to come back to us and say, this is what success looks like for this specific thing. So I would like a motion um, for approval if I could be appointed that administrator for that. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Dr. Swain. Anybody opposed? I was given a big update, and I'll catch you up after the meeting. <laughs> so you came at the exact perfect time. So you are up next for the health officer report. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to for a report, but maybe something. I just didn't know you about Right, and there's a big emphasis on hospitals right now and what we call social determinants of health and making sure that we have the health equity. And so we're having to reform a lot of our key processes on intake in the hospital setting to make sure that we're accounting from every, for everything from A to Z because ultimately the success of the health department um, in, in the community-based setting is very linked to everything that you just mentioned and you know if you if you're providing folks with say the proper care and medicine but they can't keep their lights on or they don't have refrigeration or they don't have transportation it makes it hard for them to be successful in that plan so I really appreciate you sharing that during your meeting and Janet sent that out to the um, to the board for us to review so thank you for that That's certainly true. Boy, how do you change that? Hard to change a child's. It's a whole culture, you know. Child's environment. More than the money we're going to get. <laughs> More than the money we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else for your report, Doctor? I don't think so. Okay. We're going to move on to Sandy and your health nurse report. Well, I've been pretty busy, actually. Uh, um, I've had lots of high lead levels. I have the one that um, was like 60, um, which is a, a little, little guy. He's an autistic little guy that lives out on 59. Uh, Janet and I were talking today about it, and he's just right down the road from where the Amish store is on the corner. Mm -hmm. And I think that used to be a gas station at one time, and we thought maybe that, that was, they had lead, the leaded gas at that time, because mm -hmm. they found out that most of what where the lead was coming from was in his soil. It was in the soil around that their house. Oh. So, and a, and this this child seems to eat a lot of a lot of dirt, from <laughs> what mom says. And I said, well, kids eat a lot of dirt anyway. But you know, we used to eat mud pies. But I guess this one, like I said, he's autistic and and a, he's an exceptional amount. But that I mean, like the dust on the window sills, things like that. Anytime the windows open and it blows in, that was you know that that was lead there. Uh, they did have some doors, like in their home, that needed to be painted because they were they had lead. You know, was painted originally with lead paint. But uh, but then I've had uh, some people in blooming, you know, 
you know, like Bloomingdale and, and several others that have had lead in their houses, but they're a lot of older, older homes, and, you know. Um, also getting a lot of calls for vaccines, lots of calls for vaccines. Um, so uh, we really need to get that, we need to get those in. I did get approval on bombs, uh, got that approval done, but I got to get, I still have to send in reports, which Janet, I think, sent them, sent in to get the, our data loggers paid so that we can print off reports. Um, so as quick as those, that clears, then we'll be able to print off reports, send that into the state, and everything else is done. That's all. You know, Will's still, I've got Will as my backup, and he's done everything he has to do. I'm just going to have to have him print it off for me and send it to me because I can't seem to get it to print. He's going to be on vacation for two weeks. Well, mm -hmm. well, he can print it on vacation. <laughs> I do stuff on vacation. He'll work too. Yeah, so he, he can print. I mean, if he just sends me some kind of link that I can print it off of, you know, okay. that, would, that would work. Anything else for you? Um, other than that, I've been, that, that's really about it. I was gone all last week and Will was here. But, uh, yeah, and just for information in the new funding request, we have a point of care testing for lead so that we can get real time. Um, lead level so that we can do that on kindergarten roundups and you know be able to identify and target um, additional populations beyond just the ones that we're kind of sporadically interacting with but to do more of a county level surveillance. That's what I was going to ask are they so the cases you're getting right now with the lead how are they how are they being referred to you are they through the state normally it they come okay. in now a lot of times the doctor's offices will just will call me but I usually will get something from the state too okay. um, so they're actually like going to a doctor they're going, and getting so maybe back to school time it's higher because they're going well, to a and these, these kids are younger I mean they're like one and two years old a lot of them but that's that you know that's part of their routine when they go in to get their checkups or getting lead levels now okay uh, so I mean, like in Dr. Hatfield, you know, her, you know, her little kid, kids that she takes care of in her office, you know, they get lead levels, and, and so they send all those, you know, they're from Park County, they send them into the state, and then, I didn't know what she said. What did you say? They actually get them twice in the, per, in the first two years of life, so they get it 12 months and 24 months. Okay. Is that what's currently, like, the standard for pediatrics on the wellness that's a state requirement now. Oh, okay. And yeah, so, like all of them that's done, you know, any of them that's over. Okay. And then plus, plus like the Head Start, you know, Head Start requires lead levels before they go to Head Start. And so that, and that generates more of them too. But I mean, there's a lot of older homes in, in Park County, so. That's you know, what I wondered if the increase was because of increased testing or... You know, well, I mean, I assume that's I, probably why. I think a lot of it is. <laughs> the approved yeah. levels also changed within the last year. Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have to be, uh, well, if it's above 3.4, I think it is right now, then, then that's considered high. It's not considered dangerous high. You know, I don't have to open a case on it, but it's still considered high, and there's things that I have to do. And, have to, you know, once you, and it's got, they've got different settings okay. for the levels, but they're, but yeah, they have definitely changed the levels that are approved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So new levels and more testing is catching more. Yes. Yeah. Anything else for you, Sandy? And eating dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have pended the sanitation report. Um, Lily's on vacation, so we'll move on to the clerk registrar report with Jana. I think she's got some handouts for the group. I do. Okay. Um, first, before the handouts, um, our auditor had questioned whether we should have some type of um, some type of way that we're determining what types of um, like topically um, like things that are applied lotions things like that is there something we need to be doing to address that type of um, potential hazard. Um, I'm not following. Yeah. Uh, sales, people that are selling like lotions, things like that. That like homemade, like at homemade markets, lotion, oh, like at markets and things like that. She was concerned whether we need to um, have some type of regulation on that type of thing. 
Um, I chatted with Lydia about that since she does food inspections and she said the state does not. So I don't see a point, but I told her I would bring it up at a meeting. Yeah, so. I think it's important to note, but you know, if there's no um, regulations that are set forth by the state, I don't see how we could be supported in creating some resolution or ordinance at the county level to, right. to adopt practices that wouldn't stand up. Okay. I think all those ingredients yeah. are listed on the lotions. I mean, if it's made with peanut well, oil and peanut oil. There's some homeopathic um, yeah. type of offerings, I think, that the, is in the community that, you know, people have the right to choose whatever mm -hmm. they want to use. So thanks for bringing so, that for her, though. Absolutely. Um, the next thing I'll go ahead and pass out. Oh, yeah, I, know. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure. <laughs> she was still passing. I thought, okay. Yeah, I <laughs> okay, the first page there talks about the new legislation for um, health boards now, for local health boards. Um, the requirements are now different on who should sit on health boards as of July 1st, 23. After um, I just got it. After we're just we're not out of bounds. Okay. We're, we're, pretty <laughs> we're pretty good. We're pretty um, good. We're, we're yeah. close. We're close. Um, and I checked with the state. They said um, it's up to each department how each each board, I suppose, how whether they choose to implement it immediately or as people get to their expiration of their terms the, to make the changes then. So. I just kind of made notes of where we're at and so the the board will still need to be politically balanced yes um, so that's not going to be a change we have the composition of the members but what has changed is that we would need to have somebody from the county council appointed and then we would have to have somebody from the largest municipality which would be Rockville and since we don't have a mayor that would be the town board of three individuals that they would put forth and so again we would have to have the 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 balance of the political party status as well as what i understand are those appointments from the council and then the the town board yes okay. can i know my term ends at the end of what next end of, year end of 24. okay yes and, and from what i understand and please correct me if i'm wrong um the state said that we can implement that again at our own pace. Yes. Um, so it's not something that we would have to take action on right now. No. And then it would be seven members minimum, correct? That's that's what it was anyway. Right, but seven so, members minimum, right? That's yes. Still for us because it went into total actually. Oh, total. Yeah. Because it went into and correct me if I'm wrong. Population population sizes for those above and below. And correct. So that's what right. kind of promulgated this this um, Senate bill um, legislation. Anyway, so I was just getting that out there for you so you can be aware, and I'm glad we do not have to jump on that right away. We don't, yeah. So yeah. thank you for all the hard work and going through voting records and getting the board pulled into compliance when we did in January. <laughs> yeah, we were ahead on that one. We were ahead on one of them. <laughs> okay, and the next page is going to be the sales summary report and also a list of vital records to date. So as of today, we have had 51 births and 48 deaths in the county. And um, the rest of that is the sales report. That's, those are sales that we have made in the office to the end of July this year, from January 1st to July 31st of this year. And so. these revenues from sales go into which, which law? The 1159. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next page is a list of the fund totals as of the end of July. And attached to that is a list of the budget status reports for the end of July for each one of those funds. And that's what I have for you. If you have any questions, you can let me know.
everybody kind of goes through and digest the information. What are the different forms? The 1159 would be the county funded, um, the, the county, the money that's contributed from the county. We actually the have office. the health office, yes. We actually have a lot of money there from vaccine reimbursements. That's what the majority of that money would be. What about the 1168? The 1168 was a grant from the state called the Local Health Maintenance Fund. The 1206 is called the Indiana Local Health Department Trust Account. Local Health Department Trust Account. No, it, it's, it's a lot. It really is. You have to be pretty intimate with it to remember. 8136, that is the money that we're paying the nurse out of. It is the COAG grant. School liaison. The school liaison COAG grant. School liaison COAG. Yes. Yeah, like what Sandy's role is. Part of her role with school liaison. 8906 was the uh, COVID testing. Eighty nine oh seven was COVID vaccinations. Yes. Ninety one seventeen would be the emergency preparedness account. So we got So eleven fifty nine is what the county is saying plus vaccine money and our revenues. And, and yeah, anything we bring in, anything oh, okay. we have received from the <laughs> okay. county, and Thanks. the vaccine, the vaccine money, and all that vaccine kind of money. Stuff. Yeah. So I guess we're a good financial condition, then, would you say? I would say. Um, so I did get a little ahead of myself when we were talking about the HFI fund and the last board action during our July 27th meeting for the formation of the subcommittee and the update from Julie. Um, so this has not been a great week for me, so it was really chaotic. So I finally did get to email Sandy. And we talked a little bit that way. Um, the recommendations that I've brought so far, Cindy Todd from Partnership Park County, she knows all the events going on because she's a big part of planning that. She also, I, I didn't realize that she already was on, is it one of the boards or one of the subcommittees? Yeah, that was, was it the correlation of CP? Oh, the, uh, I don't have that in front of me. I, did, I got it, you know. But it's, it's a, they handle all the WIC and, yeah. and all the, um, the the yeah. she also does a lot of uh, studies throughout the county at different times during the year. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the C -H -P -W -I. Yes. Yes. Um, so she knows she has easy access, I guess, to know and a lot of connections in the county to know where we might be lacking, where some things might be needed, potentially where we could take a clinic to to make a, a large impact. So. Um, I had her, um, of course, Sandy and Melissa mm -hmm. to be on there along with me. And then um, Sandy said, and I cannot remember her name, but the department. Andrea uh, Williams. Yes, Andrea that um, DCS, um, obviously they're a good insight for us. And then I also said, um, and I talked to J.B. Butler a little bit. He's one of our council members. To, to have a council member on to give them a little bit of ownership in the program mm -hmm. so that they can 
they can have a little bit to do with with what we're doing and make them feel better about it. They're going to see firsthand the the Very experience. Very educational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. to have them, <laughs> yeah, and that it builds support. So I think that'll be helpful. So and this the CAPW, uh, I, they, uh, and Dr. Swain had made several suggestions on groups he thought should be in it. They actually that actually falls under. Like the Head Start and the WIC and the work, Workforce, you know, is all that all falls under the CAPWI. And that's part of their, of what they do. So by involving uh, Cindy in that group, that covers a whole lot of the other stuff, everything but except DCS, basically. I also would, um, I'd like to reach out to the Amish community. I haven't yet. We've got a um, couple connections. <clears throat> We do. Um, the bishops, there's a 10-member bishop society as well that I would like to reach out to and see if one of them would like to sit on the committee or at least represent so that we make sure that we're meeting their needs as well because we have a large population of Amish that are interested and would benefit greatly as well. So well, thank you for I, your preliminary I work on that. do plan on reaching out to them. Yeah. So we want to be ready when these, if we get appropriated these funds. January 1 when these come in we want to make sure that you know at our next regular meeting we're talking about the plan and <coughs> our key process indicators and how will we know we're successful so that we can really start making that impact as soon as that funding comes in in January because we've got seems like it's going to be a long way away but we're already back to school so it's it's, it's going to be here before we know it <laughs> But thank you for your work on that. Mm -hmm. um, health department employee roles and responsibilities and job descriptions. We talked about that at our last meeting, Mary Jo, because there's just a lot of confusion and ambiguity, I think, as it pertains to, you know, who's responsible for what and, you know, what are the job descriptions and, you know, everything comes back. And it is promulgated in, in state code that, you know, the health board does set that tone and we do um, have to understand, you know, from the expectations and the responsibilities and that and that's where um, Janet and Liddy um, started sending those those related documents to us and so I think over the course of the next um, time between this meeting and our next meeting we will start to work on you know basically as we're getting these funds in we've got a lot of work to do um, and we want to make sure that we have a strong foundation right we have the right resources but we got to make sure we have a strong foundation and for board composition and changes <coughs> in the future you know this has been a steep learning curve to understand you know number one what is the role of the board what are we legislated to do and what do we need to do to make sure that we have a sustainability for Park County in this leadership capacity? Mm -hmm. um, and so we will start working on those job descriptions and those performance pieces, and we're also going to work on like standard operating procedures. So that that way, if we have a change in a nurse, or if we have a change in the clerk, or we have a change in the health officer, we have a guideline and a workbook so that we can then pass that along but it will also help us understand our successes and where we have gaps in our resources so you know right now we have <coughs> say for example Liddy who's the food inspector who's the sanitation which is umbrellaed under environmental health specialist and then you have this work that's coming from this funding line around tattoos and eyebrows and piercings and all of these components and you have to start looking at our capacity in the future and what does that look like in terms of roles and responsibilities and and the strategic plan of this board after we can get that clarity from what we currently have to say do we need to partner with another county who might have somebody in that role to have budgeted funds for them to come in and do ours so it, it just has to make sure that we are making sure we are we are balancing our capacity with the available resources and setting reasonable expectations um, because that was one of the learning curves that I kind of hit hard up against when we were trying to promulgate our 2024 budget in June as to what is it that we're actually, you know, charted to do under, and there's perceptions. I'm, I'm responsible for this and she's responsible for that. and but but how are we measuring up to what the expectations are from the state and others so 
Um, it's just an exercise that we're going to be going through. There's going to be some electronic exchanges that's not going to require us to have in-person meetings, but probably some action taken in our next regular meeting. Um, and then we need to talk about some of the other components that are required by the state in terms of our annual report and how are we going to compose that and publish that and who are we going to get that to the commissioning body, the council, because it's up to us to have that education and that involvement and inclusion um, to really understand the role of the health board and the health department to give credit for all the work that's done. But unless we know that, we can't communicate that. So we're going to be working on those job descriptions, standard operating procedures, making sure that we have, um, and I'll just kind of go into the reporting schedule on item nine, a reporting at cadence that comes through the meeting so that we can have, um, okay, when do we need to participate and who needs to participate in a hazardous vulnerability assessment? When are we going to have an annual review of the contents of our EP trailer? You know, having a cadence and a reporting structure will help stand up the sustainability of future boards around the expectations of, oh, geez, because how many times do we sit here at the budget and go, well, what do we have? Mm -hmm. um, so we have to make sure that we have that tr level of transparency and accountability. And so we will, we will together come up with a reporting structure that will match our requirements from the Indiana Code of what shall be in terms of, you know, how many, how many food inspections did we do and how did we, um, based on the code, oh, it just went off, how do we know that we're keeping a current <coughs> list of those businesses and organizations that are coming into the community with all the Amish pop-ups and with all the other types of businesses that come in and the food truck scenes and things like that. How are we maintaining the level of expectation that the state has out there? So, you know, it's not that we're not, but at least we can have a baseline to understand that we are hitting all the marks that we need to hit. And then that report comes back through the board. And then it could be something that we have electronically sent to us um, it could be something that you know I don't think it's something that we necessarily have to action on but I think it's something that we have to better understand in terms of the deliverables um, because ultimately docs having to sign off on the deliverables that, mm -hmm. that are going to the state and we need to make sure that for all points and purposes that we have the board behind him and the accuracy of the reporting um, diligence completed so um, that would just be helpful, I think, for us because, you know, we hear about the resources and the capacity, but we also don't know, you know, how many, how many sanitation inspections and how many food inspections and, and there are those things that are reported through public media like the paper and things like that, but it doesn't give us the full picture of the bandwidth that's required to get through those. What do you guys think about that? Do you, do you approve that plan do you think yeah. that well, i think it's a great yeah. idea yeah. i mean i think it would be you can't be too beneficial period. yeah <laughs> and it would be more beneficial for the you know the people doing the work too because they know they are getting it done that i would like to know if i was me that <laughs> someone else is making sure i also get that done <laughs> no it's just checks and balances i mean it's yeah. having those controls and yeah, and it's not meant to micromanage because we are a governing board and we are here to support, you know, and bridge those those gaps where there may be divisiveness and, you know, um, but we can get there together. And if we're educated, then it allows us to steer conversations in a way of, you know. One that lets everybody know that we're actually engaged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if they don't have a resource to complete something. Well, and we don't really know that right now. And from my role, I will tell you that when I can understand and the board and my key decision makers, which you all are, can understand the outputs or the expectations or the deliverables, um, then that helps us inform budget process, that helps us inform strategic health plans, that helps us inform resource needs. And so, without that key piece and component of information, we're just kind of, like this last budget period, there was a lot of questions, mm -hmm. right? There was a lot of questions that we had that weren't answered. And so I think that the goal for 
by the next time, we'll have a lot of those components coming through. And, and that is not to add additional work on behalf of the staff of the health department, because we have to be mindful of the capacity, but it's due diligence and transparency mm -hmm. that we need. So between this meeting and the next meeting, we'll be working on standard operating procedures. Doc, obviously there will probably be more meeting time with you um, for you to review those and for the, the staff to be able to be informed and get feedback and then we'll get those out to the board for actioning, you know, because we want high quality and ultimately our mission is to have the positive impact on the citizens of Park County. All right. Have we checked with any of the other local health boards to see what, you know, documentation or operating yes. things that... Yeah, so I've got um, one of my colleagues is actually the president of the Vigo County Health Board. Okay. And so while that's pretty grandeur compared to Little Park County, there's a lot of lot of things that translate over in terms of core operation and procedures, and there's a lot more bandwidth there. Um, and so I think that we can take those and, and look at them and weed out what doesn't apply, but then adopt, you know, maybe some of those SOPs or standard operating procedures to help guide us and I know that Janet and Liddy um, have contacts within Putnam and other mm -hmm. um, counties um, Vermilion County Health Department is actually moving to our property I mean they had been in a um, Union Health Clinton property just away from campus where Dr. Brock was but now they're moving across the street um, so they're going to be there as well so you know I think that again it helps us to kind of break out of well this is the way we've always done it and make sure that we're doing it the way that's keeping pace with, with the need and also setting us well, up for second change. stage funding <laughs> because that second stage funding that goes through this HFI account is going to require more county resources. And if we don't start laying this groundwork with year one and showing the outputs that this health department can do, then we're going to have maybe some struggle. But that's only because we have executives that want to be good stewards to the taxpaying citizens of Park County. And we have had nothing, at least uh, myself, nothing but collaboration, I can say. Hats off to our county executives because they have been very collaborative through this process and offered great feedback. Um, so yeah, so that will be um, the work that we will be doing um, between now and our next meeting. And hopefully a lot of that work can be done behind the scenes. And then in terms of salaries and expenses and authorized payments, um, one of the things that I wanted to, to bring to the board, and this would be an actionable item for tonight's meeting, is that a lot of times there might be something that we need or like, this last um, um, uh, request um, from the 9117 for a salary um, supplementation that was requested. I get contacted when it makes <coughs> it through a channel and then I'm asked the questions mm -hmm. because I'm the chair. So I get the, I get the questions and then I have to come back around and find out additional information. And so what I would like to propose is that we have some kind of a balance, and it's not, again, to micromanage, but it is to allow a proactive approach to know something's in the pipeline that is going to result in a conversation. And I'd rather have proactive conversations than getting those eaten calls to say, did you know that this, this, and this request was made to the council, and then we have this time period where we're waiting you know, additional um, weeks to get things moved through. So what I would like to request is that we have some kind of a process, and I'm interested in your feedback, where the chair and the or the vice chair, you know, <coughs> either one of us, or if we're absent, another board member, we have kind of that order that would sign off on these funding requests that are coming out of the health board before they get to the auditor, um, so that that way we have more of a proactive approach. So if it's a piece of, okay, so it was mentioned tonight about the, the monitoring system or what have you that we're requesting to get money from. Well, if that goes through and then I get the call, you know, about it, I can't really answer the questions about how much it was for, what it's for, you know, I would just be getting that cold call 
And that's just being diligent, you know, because we have to increase our trust. We have to increase our transparency. Um, and so I'm just asking for your feedback on a process and, a, and an amount. Um, what was suggested to me just in, in complete transparency was a $250 um, extra sign-off um, so that, that we have the authorization of the board um, before it goes through to be promulgated for appropriation or, or approval. Um, How often do we have something like that, Janet, that is above that threshold? I, it could be pretty often, really. I mean, it, are you talking about something that was not already budgeted for, like? Yeah, so like the 9117 appropriation for salary request or something that maybe wasn't budgeted for um, that maybe popped up on our radar. So something that would be out of the ordinary of normal operating business that was already budgeted for that would be a, a new expense. Hmm. I don't know as far as things that are not already budgeted for. Um, well, the 9117 I mean, wasn't technically budgeted. That, that was a total mess to begin with, right. I think. Um, but like, a, my laptop that just died it was not budgeted for so the um, the quote on that is nine hundred ninety five dollars we've got the van repair so so that's what i'm saying yeah. you know in order for us to be successful i think that we need to set some guardrails and a glide path for us to not be frustrated by something getting hung up mm -hmm. and i know that it sounds you know um a little micromanaging but i think that it often it offers us our best pathway for successes because technically it is promulgated that the board does approve you know these expenses which ultimately you know we did set the budget process but there's going to be the 990 the um the invoice for the van repair was there and then i know there's a july through december piece still mm -hmm. there so interested in your feedback yeah, i'm trying to understand it well, I get it be, just because I'm familiar with the process. The process. But is the 250 is that just mean anything over $250 would need to go through this channel? Is that what the 250 That's means? how I'm taking it. Yeah, I don't think it would be meant to hang them up where we would have to wait for a board meeting to occur. I think that right. that we would just have to have like a signature but it's anything above $250, yeah. right? Like so anything other than that that's maybe not budgeted it's they can go get a third <coughs> They have, you know, it would just like a sign off on the right. invoice or so the request for appropriation. Okay. It would just require one of us to have that that layer of diligence um, is is what's being requested. Because they wouldn't be able to use more than what is actually budgeted right. without, you know, asking for an additional appropriation. As Which far as that that's goes. where the hang up goes, right? So mm -hmm. we've got the because if it is an additional appropriation, then it probably should be approved by or but, and it hasn't yeah. currently ran through that right. process per se mm -hmm. um so that's what i you just did a very to make good sure job clarifying that just to make sure we're doing our due diligence and keeping you guys transparent as well as us mm -hmm. you did a good job summarizing that thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> my brain's kind of mush right now so <laughs> it's my one thought <laughs> for you to <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't really make sense to me since the board's supposed to be responsible for the oversight of the budget, just to at least have the information, like you said, that we'll see, we yeah, would. we know that's happening. They need it. Like yes, they need this. We like, would. We want to be on board and say yes. We approve and submit the budget for approval, but then they work within what like all what these reports back here work within that. I mean, if something is not. If there is not an amount in that line, say office supplies or something like that, then they would have to ask for an additional appropriation to be able to spend money mm -hmm. from another line or transfer money for that yeah. item or whatever. So for example, this year we've got a van repair pending. We've got um, the computer because the computer died. We've got some other cleanup that we've got to do on the other fine. But I mean, those would be the things for example, that we really need to have some guidance and some approval layers on that's that's currently not in the budget or appropriated. Well, I mean that would that's not only 
that would be for your protection as well because nobody could come in and say, oh, well, she bought this and she bought that. <laughs> well, not necessarily, I mean, you would need it, but I mean for a larger amount. So are we going to make a motion around something? <laughs> so how do you want to handle it? Is it something you want to send out to the entire board and then we just say, you know, I'm, I'm good with this or... Or do you just want the president, the vice president, to handle it? I mean, I I'm asking for suggestions. Like I said, it was it was recommended about a 250 for you know transfer between lines or unappropriated um, funding request, and because that will also help get the resources into the office in a more timely fashion versus the the phone calls and all of those right. pieces occurring behind the scenes to come back and have additional well, conversations. She needs to be able to work accordingly. I mean, she yeah. can't be. Right. So so All I'm asking for that matter. <laughs> so I'm asking mm -hmm. for a recommendation on that process just to have that authorization. Maybe it's an electronic thing where if Janet says this is just an example. I have a quote for my computer, it died, what's the justification? And you know, I'm gonna send this on and then she has my electronic or Sharon if I'm on vacation, Sharon's mm -hmm. electronic and if not then yours so that then that way the auditor says oh this is went through the health board and it was at least looked at um, and then we can always put that on the next meetings agenda or send out something well and in all reality I mean yes all claims get processed through the auditor but like I said we go back to that budget that's already been approved mm -hmm. type of thing so I mean and I think yes and no. only I mean, I mean, I'm thinking maybe two at max just because of the timeliness. Like, yes, you know, sometimes there's, there's, there's too many board members that get an email, and I know I'm guilty sometimes. I don't check my email every mm -hmm. day, or I don't get that email. I don't want somebody waiting on everyone's right. approval right. to do it. Um, <coughs> I think it could be a text. It could be a call. Yeah. It could be, you know, and if it's something that I need to steer up conversations proactively <laughs> to say, hey, you're going to see this coming through the council, this is why, this is what, mm -hmm. um, then that allows us to have a better, you know, ability to be successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see any issues with that. I mean, no, I think it makes sense. I, I mean, I think, it, I think it makes sense to have that. It like makes that. sense. I just don't want to limit the people that right. are in the office right. to be able to do their jobs. Because right, exactly. Because they've already been approved to be able to do that. So, so I don't want to, so like, budget over items, I think, is what you're saying is one thing. But right. But then these other But, like, items. her computer, yes, yeah, she's going to be spending $1,000. I mean, just so, I mean, I, I yeah. don't think that, I think that's good for your safety and ours. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the van repair, mm -hmm. that's not in there for this year. And then you know, other pieces that may come up that may not be in the current budget that's over that 250 right. that we need to have that stamp of approval on to say, yes, this is coming, let's manage this, and then it kind of flows through the process mm -hmm. when it's supposed to, or if it's a transfer between lines that we need to do that's being requested, mm -hmm. um, I think that we would probably want to, I think, what you said, we would need to know about that too if it was like on the budget, but we're requesting a transfer, right? Well, like if it's if it's within the same number, you can move monies. If it's without that number, you have to get the appropriation from the council. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You can transfer from like if it's from to postage to office supply, as long as it's in the yes. same, you know, Genre. section. Yes. Yes. How are you? Yeah, you can put it easily. Yeah, yeah. category and not a category. There you go. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> I told you my brain is mush. <laughs> okay, so, so do we want to start that process then? Yeah, okay. I think we need to. And mm -hmm. especially with a lot of this new funding and the work coming up, because there's going to be some pop-up expenses that we probably didn't account for that we don't have crystal balls and we don't know if something's going to break tomorrow that you guys need assistance with. And this is really meant, again, not to micromanage, but to help stand up success and be able to proactively communicate for those non. Well, I will protect you. They can't say you're burning through funds because mm -hmm. I think there may have been an issue with that mm -hmm. in years past, which is why we've gotten to this point because, like, way years past. That's all I'm saying. 
I mean, so I don't know what to make the motion for exactly because I don't know what the process would be, but I would make a motion to, to implement something mm -hmm. that payments get approved for the board that are not budgeted for. That are, you know, outside of the budget. That are outside of that the budget. That would need appropriated. Mm -hmm. That would need appropriated by the council. Yes. Above 250, 250 or above. I'll say. Okay, then. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any other business? I don't have any. I think we've had a great discussion. Does anybody have anything that they're wanting to add to the discussion tonight? All right, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn just before the 7 p.m. I'll hour. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go with the contractor. <laughs>